And here we are coming to you live from the top secret broadcasting bunker here at Area 52, just outside Pyongyang, North Korea. Uh, truly, I got to keep it secret now that I'm in North Korea. They find out I'm here. I'm a dead man. Good to be with you today. You just cannot cut off Handel's Messiah. To me, the greatest, absolutely, without a doubt in my mind, the greatest fusion of scripture and music together is Handel's Messiah. No doubt about it whatsoever. I absolutely love that. Um, I'm going to use it for the uh, classical music piece for the next uh, three or four broadcasts. I don't know. I may just keep playing it over and over again. It's absolutely wonderful. The music is extraordinary, and it just follows. The, the singers who sing this are just following uh, the scriptures, and I have the scriptures open. Isaiah chapter 40, comfort ye, comfort ye, comfort ye. I love that. Comfort ye, my people saith your God. And he says it twice there. Uh, to me, it just it just stands out. It's like Jesus saying, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Why is he saying it twice? Uh, comfort ye, comfort ye. Why? Why is he saying it twice? Well, in ancient Hebrew, in the ancient Hebrew language, that was to show an emphasis of the blah, 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 blah. No, it's in there twice because Christ comes twice. Old Testament, New Testament, first coming, second coming. There was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There is going to be another outpouring of the Holy Spirit according to the Scriptures, according to what the Bible says. Um, some people's idea, and I, I still don't know where they get this, their idea of, uh, of what's going to happen in the end times, they say the Holy Spirit's going to be taken off the earth. Uh-uh. The Bible does not say that. It does not say it anywhere. The Bible, the, however, God is going to conclude the Gentiles. He's going to be done with the Gentile age, and then he's going to deal and, and offer salvation to Israel. This is why it's mentioned twice. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably. And the word comfort is a Holy Ghost term. That's what Jesus was getting at in John 16 when he refers to the Holy Spirit as the comforter. And so here we have comfort ye, speak ye comfortably. When you speak comfortably to Jerusalem, you're quoting Bible verses. And I've got, uh, I'm going to give you a little preview today of next week's Watchmen video broadcast. I, I finally got it recorded today, and it's dealing with another spirit. And when you speak comfort to someone, the only real way to comfort someone is to give them the comfort of scriptures. It's the only way to do it. Speak comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. Maybe I could have, maybe I could make a career out of singing nah. That her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double. I love it. For all her sins. Mm, 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 mm. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God, because God is a straight path, not a crooked one. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Think of, um, think of your DNA right now in your flesh. It's crooked. It's twisted. And uh, God's going to make it straight one of these days. And in verse 5, my, one of my favorite passages, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. That, that is uh, also one of my favorite pieces out of Handel's Messiah. Of course, a lot of you are familiar with uh, the Hallelujah Chorus. And uh, if you're not aware of the tradition that goes on with that, it is customary when the Hallelujah Chorus is performed, you stand. And, um, and that goes all the way back to, I think, the premiere of uh, Handel's uh, Messiah in front of the King of England. And they noticed that as the... Um, the part of the uh, Messiah called uh, the Hallelujah Chorus, as it was playing, 
uh, the king, I don't remember which one it was, <clears throat> stood up. And everybody, of course, you know, the king, the king standing. So everybody else stood up. And they asked him why he stood up. And he said, just out of sheer respect and reverence for what I was hearing, the music that I was hearing and the words that I was hearing. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. There's nothing that puts me in a better mood other than listening to Handel's Messiah. I hope you can handle it today. Um, let me give you a little preview. I want you to get your Bibles out. I've got some news stories to deal with, but I just feel like talking Bible here for a little while. Um, it just wouldn't be right to whine and gripe and fuss and moan about everything going on in the world and not bring the Bible in on the scene. So let's do that first. Let's seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things, all these other things shall be added unto us. Um, I've been working all week on the script for another spirit. I I finished another Jesus last week and then ran down to the preaching conference down in uh, Oak, uh, Harrison, Arkansas, and now I'm back, and uh, I, I started working on this script from scratch, and I didn't know exactly. I, did, I usually try to take some notes ahead of time, and, and uh, I just couldn't put anything together, so I just spent a lot of time Monday and Tuesday praying and studying and seeking the Lord and asking for help and everything like that. And I have something that's somewhat intelligible concerning this issue of another spirit. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. I've already said what I'm going to say in the Watchman broadcast. That's already been recorded. Lindsay's going to start editing it. But um, it's going to make some people mad. It's going to make some people angry and upset um, because, and, and it's, it's almost like Psalm 2, why do the heathen rage? Well, they're heathen, okay? That's why they're mad. They're angry because they're, they're lost. They're going to hell. I would be angry if I, if I realized I was going to hell. I would be angry. And uh, this teaching is going to make some people angry because I'm going to show from Scripture that the spirit that people have in them that they were told is the Holy Spirit is not, in fact, the Holy Spirit. They, th it doesn't match. And, and I, want you to, I want you to comprehend this. Let's say that... Uh, uh, a warning came on over the news in, in this area, they, and I'm sure they do it in other places of the country, what's called an amber alert. And we all know what that means. It means that some child has been abducted, and the police issue an amber alert with all of the evidence that they have. The, the, the color of the car that, that took the child, uh, maybe the make and the model of the car, a description of the man that or the woman that took the child. Uh, the description is uh, he had long shoulder length hair in a ponytail. Um, he did not have, he had no beard, uh, but he was unshaven for maybe a day. He had a scar on his, on his cheek and he had a, had a tattoo on his arm and um, and so on. So you get this description of a of a white male with shoulder length hair and a ponytail with a scar, and he's got tattoos on his arm. Okay, so the police pull over a car that matches the description of the car in the Amber Alert, and they're going, Yeah, I think we got him. And they go to the car, and they find a guy in the car with short hair, a full beard. No scars and no tattoos. That's not the guy. Because you can't just grow a beard to change your identity in a day. Okay, it takes weeks to do that. And so they, they took the description that was given, and they'll probably just search the car just to be safe, but they'll, they'll take the description that's been given to them in writing, and they're looking at the description, and they're comparing it to the man in the car, and they're saying that's not the man. It wasn't the man. And he has an alibi. We checked his, you know, cell phone data. We triangulated where he was two hours ago, and he was where he said he was. And so this is not our man. And this is what I'm doing with the, the issue of another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel, is that we are given in the Scriptures a written record of what Jesus is, who he is, what he looks like, what he's going to look like. 
we're given a written description of the spirit and how the spirit works and how the spirit operates. And people don't believe it. They don't believe the record that's been given to them of what the Spirit of God is. And so they have received, they've done exactly what the Apostle Paul warned against. They have received another spirit. It's not the same spirit that comes from God. And then they get cocky with you and they get mad at you. Well, how do you know? How do you know? You don't believe. That's your problem. You don't know anything. And you're just going, well, I'm just reading right here in the Bible where it says... God does stuff that's not in the Bible. And you'll hear this from people. You'll hear it. They'll, they'll, and they've been told this by some guy. And you ask the question, really? God does stuff that's not in the Bible? Where does it say that? Well, it doesn't. See, that's my point. But we're told to follow the scriptures. Let me uh, walk you down a little trail here. Um... 2 Corinthians 11, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if ye see, receive another spirit who we, who, which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear well with, well with him. And people are listening and bearing with the preachers and the ministers and the churches and the meetings and everything else that is giving impartations of false spirits to people. Stan Johnson of the Club O Prophecy wanted to give me an impartation. He wanted to hit me on the head so that I would start having dreams and follow those instead of following the Bible. And I said, Get, don't put your hands on me. I remember talking to him in his office where he, this is where he told me, Mike, not everything that God does is in the Bible. And I'm sitting in this office and I, I promise you, and he agreed to it. I said, it became very, very obvious to me that there was a wall between me and Stan Johnson in that office. I mean, I felt it. I knew it was there. And I mentioned it to him because he was trying to convince me I need to have impartations and I need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and I need to be drunk and I needed to have visions and I needed to have all this stuff. And I wouldn't let him do it. And I said, there's a barrier in this room right now between me and you. And he said, I know there is. I, I sense it. Well, what does that tell you? And so anyway, um, let, me, let me show you this. Um, we're, we, we learn how to identify the real from the fake spirit. First John 4, 3, and every spirit, here is a, a spirit now, a confession, a religious confession is always going to have a spirit behind it. It's always going to be a spirit behind it, whether it's true or false. And so here he says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. So, wow! We have a way of detecting whether it's the real spirit of God or not. Now, I've, I've had testimony from people uh, I've never done this myself, but I've had testimony from people who've said that they um, have encountered people they felt like was possessed with devils, and they would ask them certain questions they find in the Bible. Number one, did Jesus Christ, is he God in the flesh? And they, they ask certain people that um, in in.